Hi, I just wanted to start by saying thank you all for coming out and watching my presentation. Um, a little bit about myself, my name is Alyssa Buchanan and I've been a nurse for a little over three years. Um, I'm currently working on my bachelor program and this is part of the curriculum and how I got on children's health, eating healthy and exercising. Um, we had to do a community survey to see a health issue that was um, prevalent in our community and it found that 33% of adults in our community are obese or struggle with obesity. And a lot of what you do as a child carries on into adulthood so what we found that if you combat the issue as a child then you will lessen the prevalence as adults. I brought some coloring sheets for our kiddos to stay um, busy and they're a little fruit activity. And I also found a something new coloring sheet um, on um, happiness is homemade and it's just a fun activity for you to do with your kids to try to get them to try new things. It's not always easy to get kids to um, try broccoli or things that don't look fun. So you set a goal to uh, try a certain amount of new food um, a month and when you reach your goal, then they get a reward for whatever reward um, you put in them. So we will want a few of those. And their coloring sheets as well. So the objectives of my PowerPoint today are to for you all to be able to identify alternatives, better alternatives in regards to food choices to help decrease the likelihood of obesity occurring in your children. Uh, another objective for the PowerPoint today is for you to be able to apply your knowledge of the importance of school age children's exercise and activity level. And at the end of this, we're going to have a little questionnaire to help gauge what you all gathered from the presentation. The third objective is you'll be able to summarize why, why childhood nutrition is a key determinant to your child's health by summarizing the overall lesson and expanding on ways you can be good role models for your children. Starvation 
and our bodies store fat when we go hungry. Nobody can fight this alone. We need to talk. We need to educate ourselves and our children about real food. And governments will have to act with curbs on marketing and taxes on junk if we do anything about the shape we're in. They say we need... Um, so what are your all's takeaways from that video? Kids uh, get their getting habits from us parents. Okay. So whenever we eat unhealthy just for convenience, they're going to grow up one to eat unhealthy just for convenience. Yeah. It's a part of our culture. So we make those decisions because it's normal for us to just swing in because everything's go, go, go. So we stop and eat fast food rather than going home and preparing like a nutritious meal. Exactly. It's all about convenience. Mm -hmm. What's all you so a little background history about the facts about child obesity. Our most recent estimates indicate 31.8% of our children aged 2 to 19 are either obese or overweight. The childhood obesity crisis marks the first time in history that our, our generation of American children may face a shorter life expectancy than their parents. An overweight adolescent has a 70% chance of being overweight or getting being obese as an adult. Children with obesity are already demonstrating cardiovascular fact risk factors typically not seen until adulthood. Children with obesity have three times more health care expenditures than children at healthy weight, costing an estimated $14 billion a year. Numerous health risks are associated with childhood obesity. Some of those include high blood pressure and cholesterol, which increase your risk for cardiovascular disease, asthma, sleep apnea, diabetes, joint problems, or pain, fatty liver disease, gallstones, and reflux, otherwise known as heartburn. Some, some parents ask how much physical activity is necessary for their children. Children need about 60 minutes or more of physical activity each day. Aerobic exercise, brisk walking or running should be accounted for at least three times a week. Muscle strengthening and activities such as gymnastics or push-ups should be accounted for three times a week. Bone strengthening is also very important and should be incorporated at least three times per week in the 60 minutes of physical activity. In addition to increasing the physical activity for your children, it's also important to limit the screen time and sedentary time that they have. Um, recommendations show that two hours, no more than two hours is recommended of screen time per day for children. That includes TV, iPad, playing video games, or what have you. Um, and this just shows a few exercises and examples of each that um, you can do. Like, um, walk or ride a bike to wherever you need to go, recreational exercises for three times per week, like basketball, soccer, volleyball, aerobic exercises like biking, swimming, or dancing. Flexibility and strength, stretching, push-ups, um, martial arts is a good one. Um, Reading, gardening, house cleaning, and then cut down, like I said, on TV, video games, and computer games for long periods of time. I made this nutritional needs chart because some people struggle with knowing how many calories is acceptable and how much protein, fruits, vegetables, grains, and dairy their children need. And it varies by age group and the size and the amount of activity that your children are getting. The more activity your children are getting, the less or the more calories they need to sustain their energy levels. So as you can see, the older in age you get, the more calories your children need per day. And it varies by girls and boys because boys typically are of larger stature than women. 
So the boys need a little bit more calories and a little bit more protein and fruits and vegetables than girls do. The fruits don't really vary that much between the age groups because of their natural sugars that are in them. So it's not, it's not, a, it's a good option to, to have fruits, but because of the sugars that are in them, it's, you're, you need to limit them so you don't have too much of the sugars in your snacks. Some key points about nutritional needs. On the previous slide, I mentioned that children need to ingest more or less calories depending on the amount of exercise they're participating in. As a child is getting older and they're growing, the more calories as well as fruits, vegetables, and protein they need. We need to limit their added sugar, which is brown sugar, corn sweetener, and corn syrups. We need to lim limit the saturated fats that you see in red meat, poultry, or full fat dairy products. This is just an eat well plate that's recommended um, by our food guide. Um, and it just shows you an example of fruits and vegetables and our bread and potatoes, milk and dairy products, um, meats and fish and eggs. Here's a quick um, five tip quick video. Um, just that gives you a few helpful hints. I know sometimes it's hard for parents to get their kids to eat healthy foods if they don't look fun or if they don't have that crunch in there or something that makes them drawn to the food. So this gives you a quick little tip um, that might help make your kids more fascinated and healthier options. Running my own company and household means that I'm always racing around trying to get everything done and there's just never enough time. So I'm grateful when I come across a really good instant fix, which is why I'm excited to pair up with Olay Regenerate. Their instant fix collection fills wrinkles, smooths texture, and reduces the look of pores and veins. You guys want to try it. And today I'm going to share one of my favorite instant fix ideas for your kids' school lunchbox that I think you're going to love. Getting your kids to eat a healthy lunch is a problem that many moms struggle with, right? If your kids want the same boring lunch every day, or the healthy stuff absolutely never gets touched, I'm going to help fix that in an instant. Here are my five favorite tips to make sure your picky little eaters empty their lunch boxes and eat their fruits and veggies. Tip number one, you always want to make sure that you're covering the four basic food groups. Not only is it the healthiest way to eat, but it's also the best way to give a little variety to lunch. And variety is what's going to make it exciting. Every lunch should contain a fruit, a vegetable, a carbohydrate, and a protein. This way you can feel confident that they're not going to get bored by their choices, and they're going to get plenty of nutrients to make it through the school day. Tip number two, speaking of variety, you always want to make sure that they have plenty of different shapes and sizes to choose from. Veggies can be cut with small spirits, so they're easy to dip. Fruit doesn't always have to be served whole. Bag it up so kids can pop it right in their mouth. Or use a melon ball or a cantaloupe, honeydew, or watermelon to switch things up. Some kids may not want to eat a whole sandwich, but if you use a cookie cutter to cut it into a heart or star shape, now that's a different story. The point is to present foods in an unexpected way so you really jazz it up and inspire kids to become great eaters. My third tip is to make lunch as colorful as possible. I mean, come on, who wants to eat a bunch of beige food? Always remember to eat a rainbow. Try to incorporate as many colors as possible in your lunch. I like to include berries, edamame, or even veggie or root chips to switch things up. Not only is it more nutritious, but it's also visually exciting as well. Tip number four, you also want to offer a variety of textures as well. So try things like crunchy pretzels, smooth yogurt, or even soft cheese. Your kids will be more willing to try new things if you give them lots of appealing options to chew on. And finally, tip number five. Now that you have all the food ready to go, it's time to pack it all up. And this is an important one. Ditch that brown paper bag and that lunch box full of plastic baggies. I'm telling you, use a bento box instead. You can order them online or you can pick them up at a wide variety of stores. 
Bento boxes are great for kids because they can open up their lunch, take all their food, display really nice, and they don't have a lot of plastic bags to try to open. And the best part is there's no waste, which is really important to me as a mom. Bento boxes just make life so much easier for kids. I mean, come on, look at the difference. Which one would you rather eat? And that's it. Variety really is the spice of life, and your kid's lunch is no exception. If you offer them a wide range of beautifully presented, fun options with different shapes and sizes, they're more likely to try them all. Their food should taste good and look good. Believe me, if you follow these simple steps, the lunchbox will come home empty, and you'll probably hear the other moms saying, how does she do it? So I hope you try my tips out, and make sure to visit OlayInstantFix.com for more information on the Regenerous Instant Fix collection. Bye! So like she mentioned, just making food fun for your kids, adding lots of colors, shapes, um, sizes, anything helps them um, try new things. Um, also, she said making it fun, like incorporate them in the food prep process. Anything you can do as a family helps to um, increase your chances of eating the healthier options. Um, here's some references, and I also have a questionnaire. Uh, I'll hand out some papers to um, have you fill out your answers to these, just to kind of gauge how much information you gained from the presentation. And I want to thank you all for coming out and listening to my presentation, and I hope you take some of these um, helpful hints home with you. Thank you.